Welcome to the Mischief, I'm Valen and this is the Thermal Series Mods, where I take you through several interlinked mods. Today I'll mostly be covering Thermal Cultivation. For details about the mods, check out the first few seconds of my first video in this playlist, or check the description below. We're going to be focusing on those that aren't technically machines, but can be qualified as them in some ways. That's pretty much those that don't use power, uh, or at least most of them don't. And that is with this, the Aquatic Entangler. This is a simple recipe with some copper and a fishing rod. Essentially, it is a automatic fishing trap. Uh, once placed in water, you need to have water around the sides. More water around it is usually a better idea. Uh, you can automatically start getting fish. Now I have several of these, and if you watch carefully, you can see some particle effects happening in front of these little chomping jaws. That means that something is happening, and items are being captured, or at least some kind of fishing attempt is being made. Now as I've got all these stacked in here, let's go with this very simple one here that has nothing going on with it. If you want to learn about the machines when you right-click on them, it often will have some kind of little information panel on the side. If you want more detail on this, I recommend sneak clicking with the Thermalpedia. It will give you a lot of information on any number of blocks. This just represents the loot that it will be grabbing and a spot here that you can use to help grab specific types of loot. Just placing this in the world will automatically get you fish. Now this has been running for a little bit and I've got some fish. If you look over here, we have augmentation slots. We've got redstone controls and you can change this. So right now, this is going to ignore any kind of levers or anything like that attempting to turn it off. If you turn it up to high, then that will obviously work for that. You can also have it set to low, which means it will respond to lower redstone signals instead of the maximum one. Now, if I move over to an augmentation, the Aquatic Entangler can handle a number of different upgrades that you can put in here. Namely, there are augments, which are these, hardened, reinforced, or resonant integral components. These are basically just a little box that you can put in here and it will automatically upgrade things. Now if you look here it says scale factor two times. Almost everything will get upgraded by a factor of two. In this case if I go to a reinforced one it would upgrade it by a factor of three and then the resonant upgrades by a factor of four being the best because it will then fish things four times faster than it previously did. Now on top of that you can also add in things like a knowledge concentrator. This will take your insightful crystal I talked about in the previous video and turn it into a machine upgrade. You can put it in here and then you'll get this little XP symbol showing up. What this represents is that as it's fishing things it will then capture the XP gain from this. Then you just click on this when you're ready and you take the XP to yourself. Now there are other things as well like an item filter you can put in here. This will add in an item filter option at the top this means that you can then tell it, I don't want to pick up things like a sword. Now it just puts a ghost in here, it does not duplicate the item, so you can just click it to make it go away, and you can reverse the list as you need to. Click here to go back, and that's it. Let's look at the different augment levels. I have this one up here that currently has a hardened integral component, the lowest level one. Level two, we're looking at a lot more fish than the previous level. And then level three, so much more. So let's go with an augment level 3 that has a radius increase. This one has been increased plus 2 because I put 2 radial enhancements in here, which these do stack. Not all enhancements that you can put in here will. I also put in a resonant integral component, which definitely increases the speed at which it fishes. So it fishes 4 times faster in a much larger area than it did before. So let's talk about nets. Nets are the only option I'm aware of that will fit in this area, and it's a junk net, and it's used in here to catch, well, junk. As you can see, I've got some scattering of a few items. It would already be full and overflowing if I had not also already filtered it. I added a filter, I've got a radial enhancement so it fishes in a larger area, and I've sped it up with a resonant integral component. If you check the filter list, these are all the items I already had filtered, I just grabbed one, I clicked it in here, and then I threw it away. Alright, let's talk about hive hoppers. These are intended to be used with bees, of course. You just need to place one underneath a beehive or a bee nest. They'll act exactly the same in both circumstances. And you'll start getting honeycomb and honey. As you can see, you get plenty. 
from this area. And no, this will not actually anger the bees in any way. It will automatically harvest them without any kind of negative result. All right, next let's talk about the aqueous accumulator. Essentially, it will take water on either side of the block and create it infinitely. Now, of course, it does have the regular augmentation slots, has the redstone controls. If I turn this to ignore redstone, it will automatically start running. And it is filled with four buckets of water just like that. Now I can put a bucket in here, it will instantly fill it up. I can take it back out and use it. Alternate to that, I can also take a bucket out in world just like this. Clicking on it with an empty bucket will get you a bucket's worth and it will instantly replenish. It works by just having a water source on at least two of the sides. Putting a water source on the top or bottom of this machine will not actually work. All right, next up, we have the Igneous Extruder. You don't actually put things inside of it. You only take things from it, unless we're talking about augments. But in order for this to function, it works similarly to the Aqueous Accumulator. But instead of water on multiple sides of it, you'll need lava on one side and another material on the other, whether it be water or blue ice. Here I have water on one side, lava on another, and this is creating cobblestone. Now another setup that you can have involves a third block placement. We've got lava, we've got water, and if you put a magma block underneath, it creates smooth stone. And then we've got the third setup, we've got lava, we've got blue ice, and we've got soul soil. This will make basalt, just like in vanilla. Now let's talk about nullifiers. This is the voiding block. It will destroy things. This will destroy whatever you put in it, and click destroy. It's gone. Just like that. Bye bye. Now this one here, I currently have one upgrade in there and that is a filter. This often is the case because people will have items and or liquids being pumped into a nullifier that will automatically be destroyed. If you place something in here, it will not be destroyed until you actually press the button. But if you have things automatically being pumped in, then they will be destroyed automatically. This is going to prevent things from coming in or allow them. In this case, deny list. Let's put in another right sword. We're going to have it match NBT. I'm going to put this in here. I can't even put it in there because it will not allow it to go into the space. All right, next up we have the Vacumulator. This is actually one of my favorite blocks there is. It acts a little bit strangely from what one might expect if they're not familiar with it. A Vacumulator is similar to a minecart hopper, but in a much larger area. And it will also pick up below it but not as far below it as it does above. It is going to pick up in a nine by six by nine area. So it's a little bit confusing to see, but I kind of gave you a little bit of a visual area so that you can kind of understand where it's going to vacuum things up by default. Now this one is turned off. If I turn it on, it then has a little bit of an animation. Now if you drop something in the world, it will in a moment pick it up and it goes right inside. If I throw this down one block below, it does not pick up the bucket. It actually just kind of lets it sit there. And it is currently functioning. You put one of those in there, and if you have a bunch of XP nearby, you use some of those, it will instantly pick up the XP and go into its storage unit. And as before, you can also filter this so it can or cannot pick up certain items. Next, we can talk about the Arboreal Extractor. Now you'll notice that there are some different things going on here. We've got a little space here, we've got a little space here, and a little space here. This, this one is the simple one. This is where the, the, the tree blood is stored, depending upon the tree type. It is probably going to be resin, sap, or latex. This shows you the different recipes. If you click on it, it shows you what each tree will give you. And then you have a little space here. This is for something to help it speed up, and that is Phytogrow. Phytogrow is a fertilizer. It's similar to bone meal. It does have three different recipes and you'll get three different quantities from each recipe. This can be used to help increase the speed at which things will actually work. On its next extraction, which does take a little bit of time, so don't expect it to be used immediately, you'll notice that this has just sped up and it will start gathering more sap. Let's go to another one here. We currently have the jungle tree. This will give you latex, which you can then use to make rubber. It is very bouncy stuff, and there's cured rubber, which is also very bouncy stuff. Both of which are going to be used for making multiple different upgrades, machine parts, and so on. So spruce trees will get you double the amount of the other three types of resin. What good is resin? Primarily for crystallizing it into rosin, which is similar to coal. 
or tree oil, which is basically a liquid fuel. Let's talk more about cultivation. Now if you look here, we have a lot of different crops. Each one will have a very minimal amount of benefit that you can get. As you can see here, a half a hunger haunch, a half a saturation, and you can't cook it, but you can compress it. All of these can be compressed into different crate versions or sacks or bundles, depending upon if it's like a barley or something. Now currently there are some really beneficial recipes that you can get from these as well. Spice cakes use a little bit of wheat, honey, eggs, milk, and of course, satter roots. If you eat spice cake, it will clear away any kind of status ailments you may have. Speaking of cakes, there's also the chocolate cake. It doesn't have any special properties, but it does look really cool. And then we've got this, the perspicacious stew. We have some spinach, some barley, eggplant, and a bottle of enchanting will get you one of these. All right, I have my insightful crystal here to help store my XP, just to help illustrate this. But if I eat some perspicacious stew, I can gain a benefit that will increase the amount of XP I gain. 10 bottles gets me basically just around five and a half, maybe slightly more than five and a half levels. Now, if I eat a perspicacious stew, I'll gain clarity, which gives me one minute of increased XP harvesting. There's 10 bottles right there, over seven levels. That's not all though, there's also flax. With flax, you can straight up convert it into string. There's a few more alternate foods as well. One being a frost melon. When you plant this on the ground and it grows into being, it will also replenish snow on top of itself. But more importantly, by eating a frost melon slice, you gain fire resistance for about 10 seconds. Now here's the thing though, is that sometimes you can't find these seeds in the world and you've got to find a farmer and do some trading. I did mention more, and by that I mean spores. There are four new spore types that you can actually make, each of which are intended to be used with a machine that I won't really be covering much today, just kind of glazing over. Each one has a crafting recipe, which is crafted with bottles of enchanting. Now what's the benefit of each of these? Well, let's take a look at the glimmer cap spores here that we've created by crafting them. You cannot plant them. They do not work in world. So what good are they? Well, the phytogenic insulator, which is basically its own little greenhouse machine, when you put it in here with some kind of bone meal or phytogrow plus some water, will make you glowstone dust and replace the glimmer cap spores. You then need to have it fed back in to the phytogenic insulator and it can start remaking exactly the same thing again. This can be very useful for making a lot of resources. Specifically, you've got glowstone, gunpowder, redstone dust, and slime. Let's talk a little bit more about phytogrow, but quite possibly the most important thing it can be used for is making phytosoil, as well as a phytosoil infuser. First, let's cover the soil. Made with some kind of charcoal, phytogrow, and dirt, you'll get one piece of phytosoil. As you can see here, things are growing rather slowly, but I wanted to demonstrate the differences. So you can definitely see the benefits of this. But you also notice that the phytosoil does not have any water access. It's not needed. Plus, it's trample resistant, which makes it the most valuable type of soil in my mind. So let's take this a step further. Now, if you look down here, I have phytosoil infuser. It's this little block here. This is the only block that I will be talking about that actually uses power. It does have different area upgrades, but it will only affect a 5x5 five five area, which, if you look here, it being at the center will affect an area one, two blocks away. So it will be a five block diameter, but it also will apply its growing bonus one block above and below. So basically, if you have one in the center here, it will affect this entire row and this entire row of soil. I have increased its speed and ability and everything that it can do. It, it, it even stores more power, that's this here, the power storage area, with this integral component. But I also increased its radius with radial enhancements. This increased it another couple blocks radius. So instead of one, two blocks, it will go three, four blocks. So it should cover about half of this farm, more or less. Now, if I turn this on, it is going to start increasing its growth rate. That's what the phytosoil infuser does. It infuses phytosoil in the area with redstone flux, or basically power. It powers the soil 
And so there you have it. I'm sure you can tell the difference between what area it cannot reach and what area it can simply by what crops have been grown. Now last but not least, what I'm going to end with and start with next time is the watering can. It is made with just some copper ingots and a bucket, and it can be used to water crops. But as you notice, I'm right clicking, nothing happens. It's because you need to be in a water area and first fill it. Sneak and right click and you will start filling your bucket with water. Then you can use it to start hydrating and watering, increasing the speed of an individual crop space. Now this can be upgraded with a tinker's table, which I will cover next time. Because who doesn't want to water a much larger space? Anyway, if you all enjoyed this video, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, be sure to come visit us on Twitch, click the notification bell, and I'll see you all next time. And as a reminder, if you sneak click with your Thermalpedia, it'll go to the machine. But even more important, you can go to the next page and see all of the different upgrades it will accept. This is a simple list and highly valuable to me. I figured you might like to know as well.